Hi, I'm Ken Johnson from Classic Toy Trains Magazine, and today I have the pleasure of working on the wiring for our D146 layout. Okay, well even in the dark you can probably tell that I'm not really excited about working on the wiring underneath the layout. So let me show you a few tricks that I've used to make it a little easier. All right, one, two, three. One of the great things about our version of the D146 is it's made using lightweight bench work that's really pretty sturdy too. Uh, so that makes it easy to flip on end and provide more light for me to see. Another great thing about having the layout flipped up on its end is that I can work from a seated position. And here I can easily pull wires through as opposed to having to work from over my head. After studying the original D146 uh, wiring schematic, uh, I figured I'd copy what they did there in, in the 1950s and use the three-wire bus wire design for our version. But instead of using a brass bar, which was popular back in the 1950s, I used Atlas 16-gauge color-coded wire. I ran the wire from the control panel all the way underneath through each joist and the entire length, eight foot length of the layout and tied it off using a pigtail at one end and the other end of course will connect to the posts on the KW transformer. Rather than using a soldering iron and solder to make my wiring connections underneath the layout, um, I figured I'll try something uh, 21st century here and use a tap splice connector um, to make all the connections between the accessory wires and the bus wire. And to do that, basically you just need to first fasten the, lay the tap splice connector onto the bus wire. And then I have a feeder wire that I will insert into the tap splice connector and use my crimping tool to lock it into place and then simply close the connection. That's all it takes. Classic Toy Trains is the leading magazine in the O and S gauge hobby. Don't miss an issue. Start your subscription today by going to classictoytrains.com/sub.